Good morning, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. Uh, welcome to the second day of the transnational learning journey held in Slovenia. This is the fourth event organized in the series of learning journeys within the framework of the LCA for Regions Interact project. Uh, this learning journey that we are organizing from 25th to 27th of May is devoted to the exchange of experience on life cycle assessment and life cycle methodologies for public procurement uh, in Slovenia. The second day, the second day of the event is devoted to the life cycle assessment good practices on public procurement, and these practices will be presented by the project partners. So, and they will be presented in the following order. The first presentation will be given by Poland and followed by Portugal, Spain, Finland, Italy, Lithuania, and Slovenia. And in the second part of the today's program, we will have uh, a presentation given by Mrs. Basta Tertning on challenges of public procurement uh, in practice. I hope <clears throat> that you will enjoy the event, the second day of this event, and I am thank you for all of to all of you being here with uh, being here with us. Uh, before going on with the presentation of LSA good practices, uh, I will give the floor to Francesco Lembo from ACR Plus who will give a short summary of the first day of the event, and also he will provide guidelines for using the interactive discussion platform. Please, Francesco. Hello, good morning to you all, and thanks for giving me the floor. So, I would uh, 
only give a very quick look of what happened yesterday. Uh, uh, we, uh, during the, the briefing part, we uh, already tried to summarize what, uh, uh, which were the most relevant comments. Uh, uh, and the first lesson we learned is that today we will try to merge also the comments we uh, received in the chat box because they will for sure enrich the discussion we had uh, through the live boards. Uh, uh, just giving a quick look at, uh, of what was uh, commented and discussed uh, in the discussion board yesterday, we can find uh, three main clusters uh, and uh, um, those are somehow all related. Uh, the first cluster uh, I'm highlighting is this one with uh, uh, Azure uh, connected through Azure Heroes and uh, uh, it is connected to uh, how environmental criteria can support or can be the basis for uh, uh, life cycle costing or life cycle approaches. And uh, uh, starting from uh, most a simple consideration on how uh, environmental clauses can support already overburdened PAs, uh, but going on uh, to uh, more evoluted reasoning on how uh, uh, close vert or environmental clauses can support uh, incrementality of adoption of uh, uh, LCA and LCC. Uh, in public administration, uh, and this is to be uh, chaired. And uh, one other comment was uh, relaunching on how uh, a long history of mandatory minimum environmental criteria in uh, uh, Italy, in the Italian Slovenia, built uh, um, a common uh, sensitivity between public administration on uh, LCC and LCA, and uh, if it was effective. Uh, a second cluster strongly interconnected to the third one is very much connected to stakeholders engagement and the tools to foster stakeholder engagement and the training and raising awareness through help desk and recommendation was highly highlighted together with the involvement of independent experts in the to initiate the LCC processes uh, and to push uh, market needs to uh, more green and more um, evoluted uh, uh, potential future needs. A light connection is uh, about this between stakeholders engagement and the need to build economies of scale and uh, stronger engagement of different stakeholders and having incremental processes to spread uh, um, life cycle approaches in public procurement. Uh, I think this is the key recap of what was discussed yesterday. I strongly suggest also today to uh, put your comments in the uh, discussion board where relevant because they allow us to move them around and they are more dynamic than in the chat board, even if they are in the uh, uh, pose those questions, they might work to uh, to help us uh, uh, keep ahead of the discussion. I'm sharing in the link uh, today's uh, um, uh, the, the link to today's board, which is this one. Uh, sorry, now I have to. Yes. Oops. So, uh, please, you are welcome and uh, let's start the discussion. We will, uh, uh, I will try to intervene during the question and answer session or the final debriefing session when relevant comments are coming uh, through the discussion boards. Thanks, Albin. Thank you very much, Francesco. So now it's time to move to the presentation of uh, ALCA uh, good practices. Uh, these presentations will be given in two parts. The in the first part, there will be presentations given uh, by our 
colleagues uh, from Poland, Portugal, Spain and Finland. And there is 10 minutes allocated to each presentation. And after this first part of presentation, we will have 10 minutes of time for questions and answers. So, the first presentation will be given by uh, Ms. Anna Bogus from the Polish Foundation for Energy Efficiency. And the title of her presentation uh, is LCC Calculators and Manuals of the Public Procurement Office. So, Ms. Bogus, go ahead. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I try to share my presentation. One moment. I hope it's working. Can you see my presentation? Yes, all it's fine. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, I thank the Marshall Office for the invitation on this meeting. My name is Anna Bogus. I have been working on the Polish Foundation for Energy Efficiency. I'm the project manager and I manage of educational EU projects. Uh, these projects uh, address energy efficiency, particularly the eco design area, labeling, energy efficient appliances, and LCC analysis. Uh, today I will give a presentation. Uh, active support of the contracting authority by the public procurement office through LCC calculators and training manuals. Um, as I mentioned, I have been working at Polish Foundation for Energy Efficiency. Uh, we are an independent non-governmental organization uh, funded uh, in the year 1990. Uh, the mission of FEVE is uh, uh, to promote sustainable development of uh, the economy of Poland and to support protection of the environment through implementing the awareness on energy efficiency. And uh, about LCC and LCA, uh, a few words. Uh, according to EU rules on public procurement, a contract must be awarded on the basis of the most economically tender. Mm, the cost uh, criterion can be determined using uh, LCC or LCA. And uh, this method uh, may cover cost incurred during the life cycle of uh, product, uh, service or works, uh, like uh, purchase price and uh, all associated uh, costs like delivery, installation, insurance operating costs, including uh, energy use, fuel and water use, and uh, for example, maintenance. And of course, end of life costs, uh, such as the commissioning or disposal or residual value. And uh, the main potential uh, for savings uh, over LCC are savings on use of energy, water and uh, fuel, savings on maintenance and replacement, and uh, savings on disposal costs. Uh, uh, it seems to be uh, difficult, but uh, how to calculate uh, LCC or LCA by yourself? yourself? Uh, not everyone uh, can do it, but there are free tools to assist with the tendering process. And I uh, would like to show you uh, some of them. Uh, first tool is uh, our LCC tools developed by the European Commission. Um, these tools are available on uh, website and calculators were created for five product groups. Uh, like vending machines, imaging equipment, computers and monitors, indoor lighting, outdoor lighting. And uh, the tool consists of a manual guide and uh, Excel. And you can, uh, you can use it for, uh, for your uh, tendering process. Uh, 
The Polish uh, Procurement Office uh, provides life cycle cost calculator on their website too. Uh, calculators plus user guides were created for uh, four product groups, uh, computers and uh, monitors, outdoor lighting and traffic signals, indoor lighting and imaging equipment. And these calculators are translation of uh, VEU calculators uh, that I mentioned in the previous slides. The public procurement uh, office is uh, the author of translation into Polish. And uh, this website uh, also provides guides on how to use LCC in tenders, like for example, uh, life cycle costing methods for buildings, an exemplary description of the life cycle cost criterion and uh, sample life cycle cost calculation. Um, these guides are available, of course, for free on this dedicated uh, website. Uh, in addition uh, to the available sources of knowledge and practical examples, the Public Procurement Office um, organizes uh, training for people involvement in public procurement. Uh, for example, on February this year, uh, the practical use of uh, calculators was uh, presented during the training and uh, uh, this is um, um, main tools on uh, our public procurement office website. Uh, it was an example of educational activities uh, in Poland, but uh, there are tools on the internet uh, that are worth looking at. And I would like to uh, show us Show you some of them. Uh, first is uh, the Smart SPP LCC CO2 uh, tool. Uh, this uh, tool consists of uh, user manual and Excel. Uh, it has been produced to help understand uh, what kind of information the tool can provide, how to use the tool in a tendering process, and how the tool should be completed and uh, by whom. Uh, the tool is available on, on website, which you uh, can see on my slide. Uh, the next, uh, the next uh, tool is uh, CleanFleets. Um, this tool supporting public authorities in implementing clean vehicle procurement according to the Clean Vehicle Directive. Uh, guide, training, package, and case uh, study uh, studies are available on this website, as you can see. The next uh, tool is uh, LCC calculator developed uh, by Harvard University. Uh, this calculator was designed uh, to support decision makers. Um, on Harvard in considering our present and future costs related to new construction, renovation, equipment replacement. Mm, and the last uh, tool uh, which I want to show you is uh, LCA uh, Planetary. It's, uh, this tool is available globally. And uh, this tool gives an overview of embodied carbon impact, impacts on and material efficiency of building designs. And uh, this tool gives access to anonymized statistical carbon heroes uh, benchmark profiles, as well as uh, policy templates, trainings, and uh, support uh, resources. Uh, thank you much for. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you got interested in the tools to help you calculate uh, the LCC. Uh, if you have any questions, do not hesit hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your interesting uh, presentation. Uh, as I said earlier, we will have uh, time for questions and answers at the end of the very first part uh, of this uh, 
presentation. So please stay uh, with us at least until the end of the okay. very first part. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, so uh, the second uh, presentation will be given by uh, by Ms. Elsa Nunez from uh, uh, from Simba, the project partner from Portugal, and she will talk on renovation buildings focused on energy efficiency and carbon dioxide emissions. So please go ahead. Hello, good morning. How are you all? I will try now to share my presentation. I hope you have some patience as I am facing today some challenge with challenges with my computer but i think i will make it in a, a few seconds so <clears throat> sorry for this but uh, i think it won't really be too long to be able to share it with you Um, can you please confirm if you are uh, able to see my presentation? Yes, we can see it. Yes. So, um, what I was, what I'm going to uh, share with you right now is uh, about how um, Symbol has been able to introduce sustainability criteria in public purchasing. Uh, for all of you that are not directly involved in the project, Simbal is a, a, an association of municipalities in uh, one uh, Portuguese re region that is Baixo Alentejo. Baixo Alentejo mm -hmm. is a region, uh, is a very nice region in Portugal with wonderful landscapes and um, with the low density, small municipalities. And so um, trying to bring sustainability into public purchasing is uh, specifically a challenge and is very important in what regards uh, Simbal's priorities. So that being said, Simbal uh, has developed uh, recently um, uh, a procurement procedure where um, innovation was uh, a main criteria. So starting from the beginning, uh, public procurement for innovation refers to the public purchase of innovative products or services. And mainly it occurs when a public institution places a purchase order to sat satisfy certain needs for a product or a service that is not yet in that specification in the market. And uh, you may ask what was necessary uh, to, to buy that was really innovative and why did it occur? And so um, this, uh, this public procurement for innovation that's followed all these stages that you are now watching on my screen that referred to needs assessment, planning, uh, prior information, market consultation, and then uh, all the procedure selection and the evaluation and the award implementation and management was mainly related to the need of uh, making uh, an intervention, a refurbishment intervention in um, the municipal buildings, so to say. This was um, achieved and this was uh, the framework was uh, a project under uh, the, um, the Interregmed project. And the um, specific procurement procedure that we aimed to, uh, to develop was intending, intending to us uh, to find the solutions for the refurbishment of two buildings that were inserted in historic areas. One of them 
is to be classified as UNESCO heritage. And as you can understand, uh, it was not possible to um, develop, develop um, a procurement, uh, uh, traditional procurement procedure uh, under these uh, so rigorous specific specificities. And so um, this was the, the solution, let us say, to this uh, very um, peculiar uh, situation. The, the main objective was to, uh, as I was saying, to refurbish two, uh, two buildings. This is the picture of uh, one of these buildings, uh, which, is, which lays in um, a place called Mertula. And I'm going to refer specifically for, to this building because it has a very uh, interesting situation, as you can see. This is the building over here. This is the one of the city hall buildings where people are working and they are um, doing their technical job and they are also uh, talking to the public and so on. And this occurs in the main, <coughs> sorry, sorry, in the ground, in the floors above ground. And then you have in the basement, a museum, because when uh, several uh, years ago, people were um, really working on this building, they discovered some uh, heritage, as you can see here in one of my, um, of my pictures. So, besides being uh, necessary to improve the energy performance of the building, keeping uh, um, a good temperature and good air quality. Also, there were requirements uh, related to humidity to preserve this uh, historic heritage that you can see in the picture. Um, and this building is inserted in uh, the historic center, <coughs> sorry, of Merdula, and it is to be classified as a UNESCO heritage. So it was necessary to develop uh, a solution that could answer all these specificities and that could really ensure that energy efficiency was an issue and CO2 uh, reduction was an issue. And the, the procedure that I was describing uh, was the main key and was the main aspect to achieve these uh, these objectives. The key su success factors to this uh, public uh, uh, procedure was that uh, it was based upon innovative innovative award criteria, and uh, the bidder's information uh, was uh, included in all the procurement procedure. Uh, greenhouse gas reduction in the context of these municipal buildings refurbishment was very relevant, was a, a, a very important criteria. And also market engagement was successful. And so this work was delivered successfully. Also, in what regards key success factors uh, the procurement procedure was based on technical uh, criteria, as I was describing, and price was valued only in 10%. And typically, in these procurement procedures, the price is the main factor or is even sometimes the only factor. And the procurement platform that was used to undertake all this procedure was adapted to uh, due to the existence of this specific procurement procedure. So, from the, this um, PPI in Baixo Alentejo, uh, the platform, the procurement platform was after this prepared to so to everyone could use it and could launch such uh, PPI procedures. 
the challenges that were faced and the transferability possibilities are now to be described. The major difficulties were related to the fact that in Portugal, and as part of the current national reform program, the promotion of a public procurement for innovation is still very recent and uh, mainly <coughs> um, big companies or big uh, procurement procedures uh, are mar more uh, related to this uh, model, let us say. And so it was uh, somehow challenging to set the grounds and to start with this type of procedure. This procedure took longer when compared with common and major constraints were overcome due to a significant communication campaign. So uh, it was necessary to keeping all uh, the requirements and keeping all the necessary transparency, but it was necessary to have uh, a very fruitful dialogue with the market in order to achieve results and to deliver uh, the work. Uh, in what regards transferability, uh, this, uh, we find that this procedure allows uh, environment uh, uh, to limit environmental impacts of refurbishment in this municipal context. And so it can, in this kind of procedure can be a very important one to integrate life cycle analysis as an award criteria in public procurement procedures. It is possible through the support of public policies to include and integrate this uh, criteria. And um, as, of course, uh, some people will know, common European directives encourage the use of PPI in Europe, even though national regulations perhaps have some more difficulty in, not in following, but in uh, enabling the, um, the application or the implementation of this type of procedures. Uh, also, uh, and just to finish, so to respect Alvin's uh, suggestion of taking 10 minutes, I would like to just to mention that Symbol <coughs> has also implemented a very interesting tool that is the central purchasing system. This system allows uh, the municipalities and other entities that adhere to the, to the purchasing system to gain access to solutions that are smarter in what regards the procurement. Uh, I can, for instance, um, disclose one that I've, I think is very interesting and meaningful in this context, that is uh, a recent um, procedure that was launched in order to um, uh, <clears throat> acquire electric and hybrid cars mobility solution. So instead of um, launching uh, purchasing of the um, typical and traditional uh, fleet uh, solutions, this one has been launched and not for uh, the acquisition of the cars or the buses itself, but for leasing and rental solutions. So to um, also take into consideration the circular economy um, uh, principles. Also, PPI is a possibility under this uh, central uh, purchasing system. And these are some facts and figures related to this. So uh, I'm sorry, but this was in Portuguese. So we have until now, 57 uh, purchases. This is the value for um, everything that was launched. This is the number of savings and we have uh, for now net 91 suppliers that are uh, in this uh, purchasing, central purchasing system. And this is a, a screenshot of the platform. In what regards transferability, this initiative is interesting for other European region as it allows on one hand to limit environment 
uh, impacts and costs, and it is also an opportunity to implement and to uh, broaden LCI criteria in what regards the uh, procurement procedures to under to be undertook and to from for municipalities and regions. This is a place where you can uh, find more information. I will be gladly answering any of your questions <coughs> whenever um, you uh, have someone to uh, share with us. So thank you for this and I leave the ground to Alvin. Okay, thank you very much, Elsa, for your presentation. Uh, we will now move uh, to the next presentation, which will be given by Sandra Hurtado from the government of Navarre in Spain. And she will be talking on about the purchase of canteen food. So please go ahead. Sandra, we are not able to hear you. Me. Now? Now it is okay? Now it is okay. Yes, it yes. is okay. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry for the inconvenience. And and can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. But the screen is not seen. Now it is seen. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So I'm going to put the full screen presentation. Okay. Okay. So thank you, Albun, and sorry for for this mistake. And good morning to to all of you. So the owner of this initiative is the public entity that manages the municipal nursery school of Pamplona. Uh, today they cannot attend the event, so I'm going to do my best and I'm going to share with you their experience on behalf of them. Uh, this tender is under the CPB meal supply service and specifically a two-year service requesting the supply of logistics of fresh, organic, seasonal, and local food, as well as the reception, storage, and transport to the nursery canteens. The service is to supply 10 nursery schools that have their own kitchen with cooks who are public workers. Every day they need to prepare 2022 menus for zero to three years old children, mid morning snack and the lunch, plus the lunch for the workers. Uh, later on, this presentation will be shared and in this link you can find the tender specification, but it is in Spanish. The tender is divided in 12 lots of food and a logistic management lot. So the, the food is a uh, veal, chicken, egg, fish, yogurt, vegetables, cereals and legumes, pasta, bread, oil, tomato preserves, and various food. Um, there are compulsory food criteria depending on the lot. Almost all of them have to be at least 50% uh, uh, of the supply from organic production, 100% uh, fresh, uh, and process GMO free and not frozen. Uh, now I'm going to describe the sustainable our criteria. Uh, the first one is the quality product with standardized levels, for example, organic that ensures a minimal chemical fertilizer and pesticide, the soil protection, 
and take care of the biodiversity. Uh, also protected denomination of origin, protected geographical indication, autochthonous breeds or traditional uh, varieties, artisanal production, uh, sustainable fishing or aquaculture. And another criteria is the distribution and the proximity channel. It gives some point if there is direct channel or only one intermediary and also whether the place of production, slaughter and transformation is up to 200 kilometers to the hiding center. This, crit this criteria takes into account the reduction of CO2 emission in the transport. Another sustainable criteria is the kind and the format of packaging. They give more points whether the packaging is exclusive and reusable and less point if it's not reusable, but recyclable, compostable, and ecological. Uh, also more points whether the products are supplied in big formats. Uh, later on, I will show an example. And this criteria deals with waste prevention and encourages uh, reusing products or secondary material in packaging. Uh, another criteria are the action for knowledge transfer, awareness raising, and education, education in food, environment, and social justice. It is given two points for each proposed activity. For example, awareness families on organic production with visits to, to the farms, also farmers visiting the school center, educational games and talks, recipes, uh, testing activities, and one of the proposed talks uh, is on reducing carbon footprint. And for, for, the, logistic, um, for the logistic lot, um, it, it was assessed the distribution of routes to avoid as, ma as much as possible uh, CO2 emission, the use of vehicles with environmental level, and no longer distance uh, than 50 kilometers from the supply company to the contracting body. Uh, and now I'm going to share with you um, the criteria for, for the bill lot. Uh, the compulsory criteria uh, was 100% no frozen, fresh, uh, and process, and GMO free, um, and 50% uh, organic. The total hour criteria was 100 point, 15 point if the products were 100% organic, 10 points if it was a PDO or PGI, 10 points if it was 100% native bread. Another criteria was the distribution channel and proximity, 15 points a direct channel and 10 points one intermediary. 10 points if the percentage of proximity from the place of production, slaughter and transformation was no longer than a 200 kilometer. As I mentioned previously, uh, the awareness on food, environmental and social justice, education action, a 10 point maximum. And there were two other criteria that uh, they weren't a uh, sustainable criteria the price, uh, a fifth of the total um, our criteria, and the response time to possible emergencies. And here, another example of the Joker lot. Uh, you can see the criteria for the kind and format of packaging. It was six point if it was exclusive and reusable, three point if it was not reusable, but recyclable, compostable, and ecological, four points if the packaging was five liters and two points if it was between one and two liter packaging. So at the end, uh, the result of this tender was 10 nursery schools with healthy and sustainable menus, uh, 1,022 menus per day uh, for children and adults, 1,000 families aware on sustainable and healthy eating habits. The kitchen and canteen staff uh, train in sustainable and nutritional menus. Uh, it has been very positive for the kitchen staff 
uh, this tender because now their work is much more valued. And concerning the um, food products, 100% um, of them are fresh, 90% uh, organic, 80% local, uh, 75 direct channel. And from this percentage of direct channel, uh, the meat, oil, yogurt, eggs, and bread are 100% uh, direct channel, 85% uh, uh, the vegetables, 65% the legumes, 63% the cereal, and only 8.5% uh, 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 for fruits is direct channel. Um, uh, to the organic sector, there is a an annual uh, return value of uh, 171,600 uh, euros. I'm um, talking about the potential of learning at transfer. It was really relevant for this tender that the city of Pamplona has signed the Milan Policy Pact that commit to develop sustainable food system, to have healthy and accessible food, protect the biodiversity and fight against waste. This pact encourages the redefinition of the school canteen programs and other public food services. Pamplona uh, also is a member of the Covenant of Mayo, an initiative to fight against uh, climate change and reduce CO2 emissions. It is important that in our regional law of public uh, contract have a specific mention on food production. As you can read, uh, the contracting authorities must incorporate aspects that require or prioritize their quality related to health and nutrition, ecological or organic character, food uh, sovere uh, sovereignty and security, Thank you, taking into account the life cycle of products or minimization of emission and raw material in transport and packaging, uh, where it is mentioned all the criteria included in this tender to take into account the environmental aspect. Uh, previous to this tender, it was carried out a pilot in two of these nursery schools with the involvement of families, nursery staff, nutritionists, the organic primary sector, the public institute of agri-food, and the Council of Organic Agricultural Production in Navarra. And the engagement of all of these stakeholders was a key development, uh, a key part to develop this, this tender. And to finalize with my presentation, uh, this tender has been the first one that included in Navarra so many environmental criteria regarding to food. This year, the government of Navarra have launched a similar tender for, the, for other a 42 schools canteens, but still there is a potential to spread, to expand this kind of tender to other public bodies such as university, nursery homes, hospital, offices, penitentiaries. So we need to, to carry on. And that's all. Thank you for, for listening the presentation. Uh, I am available for, for question uh, later on. And I will share this presentation with my email just in case you want to ask any question after after the event. Thank you very much, Sandra, for your presentation. Uh, we will be able to ask you questions after the final presentation. This very first part of presentations of LSA Good Practices. And the fourth presentation now will be given by Pekka Majala from the PFRV Institute in Finland. And his presentation is entitled Public Procurement Management Incorporating LCA and SLCA. So please, Pekka, go ahead. So, hello, everybody. Nice to be here. Um, and uh, I'm glad to present the initiative. Our initiative, which the owner, you see, I will give this, is City of Pori. Can you see now? Yes, we can see your shared okay. screen. Good. Uh, <clears throat> so, City of Pori is the owner of this uh, good practice, and then I, I, because they couldn't 
attend, attend now this event so so i will i will do my best and and, and present present uh, about the management of procurements in pori um, to start with uh, pori to describe a little bit about about the uh, city of pori Pori is the capital of Satakunta region, uh, and it's the population size is about 80, 84,000 inhabitants. So it's uh, Finland's eighth largest urban area, um, and uh, it is it is uh, nowadays uh, kind of an international city of commerce and industry, and it has also a commercial port in the country and and uh, Nowadays, uh, there is also uh, an, an, it's a cultural center, center and, and there is also university uh, studies occurring within the city. And, and it's maybe well known for musical music fans, of jazz fans, because every year there is a, a quite big jazz festival organized. Anyway, uh, related to today's uh, our our project teams, Pori, Pori is a Hinku city, and uh, in Finland we have uh, created a kind of a, this municipal network towards carbon neutral muni municipalities network, and Pori, Pori has uh, for several years uh, belonged to this network. And, and in this in this uh, Hinku municipalities means that they are committed to to um, reducing the yes emi, uh, to reduce the emissions carbon dioxide emissions uh, of, by 80 percent uh, from the 2007 level by 2030 and uh, and this is uh, in finland this similar cities and, and municipalities exist quite a lot nowadays uh, uh, i think about 30 percent of uh, finnish finnish uh, municipalities belong to this network almost so so it has uh, quite um, good solid of uh, of fertile ground uh, already for green public procurements. So there is some political will uh, occurring in Pori, which is uh, very important. Uh, <clears throat> already several years ago, for clarification of procurement management and general view of procuring system of city of Pori. So uh, Pori wanted uh, kind of procurement policy outline to be updated and, and to be developed and it was it was finished in 2019 now this uh, this figure which you see see below is is, is difficult to understand of course <laughs> not not because it's uh, not less because it's in Finnish but uh, there is several several aspects in this uh, procurement policy outline and and now which is important here is the 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 so societal uh, impact especially which is uh, defined here and and it 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 will it includes uh, the uh, environmental responsibility and resource efficiency uh, which you see in 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 this this part of this figure and there is also social responsibility uh, industrial uh, industrial policy and, and prevention of of the black uh, economy so these <coughs> these these aspects are especially now uh, in in the in the focus in this initiative um, to, to give you an overview about the size of procurements in the city of Pori, uh, the management system involves operative expertise unit, which analyzes and observes the effect of procurements, uh, which in Pori, city of Pori is about uh, 350 million euros. And if we if we would like to calculate how 
how the this procurement amount is is related to environmental uh, climate effect so we can calculate the carbon footprint uh, and it's, it's evaluated for year 2018 by a tool hung in the policy, which is, is, uh, would translate as an acquisition tool that has, has been used to calculate, calculate this amount of 140 million uh, carbon dioxide equivalents uh, per, uh, in kilograms. So, this, to give you some sort of an, uh, idea uh, about the size of procurement. And uh, now uh, this initiative, the goal here is to, to now when we have these outlines to functionalize uh, the, the procurements uh, which were outlined in the, in the, in the 2019. And, and, and Body, City of Pori uh, created uh, or formulated a cross-organizational working group in order to, to help uh, to, to control and to manage the procurement, uh, different uh, procurement categories. And they participated uh, in this kind of platform, Keino Academy uh, platform that helped uh, uh, uh administration persons uh, in in creation of more sustainable uh, what what would be the sustainability criteria and, and what how 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 to how to implement them in academies was important and i'm not going to uh, present uh, in details about gain system because you will um, there, there will be uh, another presentation tomorrow about the Skena Academy. But Pori, uh, Pori was involved in that, and uh, and and uh, it was very it was very useful. Uh, Pori also created a real time tendering calendar and uh, and, a, and a procurement tool, which includes uh, LCA and LCC um, tools. So that uh, that they are going, they are they are used, utilized when when uh, procurement uh, procurements are prepared. Now I will briefly go through some uh, details about this procurement tool, which is under still under some development. But basically, what are available for city of Pori administrative persons and, and those uh, personals who, who make the procurements, there is uh, in, in Finland Motiva uh, that LCC has uh, on their web pages uh, LCC tools, and 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 they can they are you, you, utilized. They are Excel format tools, and and at the moment they are, but only very few uh, product groups. There is a general tool, and there is another one for cars, and and third one for freezers and refrigerators, and and, and still another one for washing machines. So it's it's pretty uh, straightforward to use when 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 this type of uh, equipment is going to be purchased. Then there is a Valpi tool, which is, 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 is meant for comparison of the lifespan's cost of the lightning acquisition. Uh, so, uh, so there, when the, when you, you, when municipality needs to, needs to find, calculate, then, then when there's some information, uh, preliminary price information available, about the product, but but then other other things are not so not so clear. So this tool helps to 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 analyze other costs. The procurement tool <coughs> is built to guide the producer to um, to more sustainable procurements, and it 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 it, it requires the the procure, procurer to think about sustainability. 
and and it's created in a WordPress format, uh, and it's divided into eight different themes. Uh, you can see here it's carbon neutrality, promotion of circular economy, ecological sustainability, environmental certificates, eco labels, and this type of things. Uh, there is innovative purchases services instead of products, maybe. Promotion of social responsibility is one of them. Uh, rejection of the black economy and, and uh, the eighth one is industrial policy and market dialogue. So, uh, the, the, the procurer may select these first and what, what uh, is important for this purchase. And then there are subcategories, uh, and 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 there uh, is then different kinds of criteria that pre procurer may select. And and then there is as a helping hand, then uh, links and more uh, detailed information available that that uh, may, may be utilized. And then finally, the the tool then provides a PDF document. Uh, which the procurer may then use for preparation of the procurement itself. So, uh, and, and some of points are those that the tender needs to uh, answer, of course, in this, in this uh, process. So that all, all the required information is given. So, uh, uh, to, to finalize then, the, yes, municipal policy, sustainable public procurement is a multifaceted process. Kori has successfully been able to organize the system by, by this identifying weak points and, uh, and, and kind of a manage to, to better manage in the very uh, relatively large city to, to, to organize the purchases in a, and now we uh, the, the the situation is of course it's ongoing but the positive side here is that the also the societal impact assessment is evaluated uh, here uh, but it's not uh, uh, it's included at least in this in the process uh, there are of of course, this is because this, it's an ongoing process. So, uh, and and especially what is, is noticed is that the dissemination of information and and, and dissemination of uh, the focus point, strategic focus points in the sustainable um, procurement, uh, all these outlines, it's it's been challenging. And, and but it's very important so that we they, they all they have noted that so that everybody is 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 speaking the same language so uh, so cooperation is important and it's still it it should be should be more further developed and this procurement tool is is not quite finished so it's incomplete unfortunately i'm not able to show the the format itself it's not because it's not uh, complete and i was not able to to show uh, how it looks like at the moment but it's it will be a free of charge uh so there is a it's a it's a continuous process and uh, uh and there is a lot of things that we think that uh, can, could be utilized also in other cities uh, and and the, the help of Kano Academy has been very valuable here. So so I think this is I think I've used my time. So I'm I'm very happy to answer any questions. And and as far as I know, and 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 uh, and, and I think that you can contact also the city of Pori representatives. I could give some. Uh, contact details if, if you want. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Pekka, for your presentation. And now regarding all these uh, four presentations, uh, we will have a short session 
this work, uh, devoted to questions and answers. Uh, there are uh, there are there were a few questions uh, posted in the chat area uh, here in the Webex in the Webex platform, and two of them were related to to the presentation of Miss Bogush, and she already in the meantime she already provided the answer. So uh, one of the questions was uh, whether the LCC tools that she presented are free for to use. And she said, yes, that these tools are free to use. And then there was also another question uh, about uh, uh, the development uh, of tools uh, about the development of tools uh, that she presented. So, and also in this uh, live discussion uh, platform, there is also a question how uh, about the LCA tools, and the question is related to to the point whether these tools can uh, uh, can uh, can be relevant to particular regions, and how to choose a uh, an action then. A suitable one to a particular region. So, can you, Miss Bogush, comment about this a bit? Mm. Uh, yes, uh, I didn't uh, use this tool, but I showed uh, uh, what tools are available on the internet. Mm. I think that uh, one of tools which I presented uh, good for use is calculated from the European Commission website. It's available in English language, so I think that uh, you uh, you can use it uh, in your tendering process. And uh, there is available manual and Excel, so I think that it's easy to use. Okay, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. And uh, you said earlier you replied to the question which was posted in the chat yeah. area that all these tools are actually free to use. So uh, yes, this these tools are free to use. Okay. Uh, uh, and there is another question uh, in the live discussion board. Uh, it's again related to the LCA tools, and the question is um, about the ease of use or adaptability to local contexts. Mm, yes, I think that it's possible. For example, in uh, Poland, uh, public procurement office um, uh, translated uh, these uh, tools from uh, European Commission. Uh, they uh, made uh, trainings uh, for these tools and, and show, showed uh, how these calculators use. So I think that it's easy to adapt in local level. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and the, the another question uh, which was posted in the live uh, discussion board is, uh, uh, is related to the presentation of Sandra. And the question is the following, which dialogue or interaction between echo labels uh, and environmental criteria, for example, biofood labels is required? Uh... So it it uh, it is uh, a European regulation for organic uh, food, and there is a, a label that here I can post the the link. So all products in Europe that are organic have to wear this this label on on the packaging. Um, and also there are other labels that it was used in in the tender as the um, uh, protected uh, denomin uh, denomination of origin or geographical indication. 
and also for the fish, uh, it was the, the eco level of sustainable fishing that is also a standardized uh, certification. Okay, thank you. And there is one more question for you uh, that was posted in the chat area by Adam. And he says the following, Spain is a big European food exporter. Does biofood have an eco-labeling system in this regard? Do children with special dietary needs, for example, on a gluten-free diet, receive specially labeled nutritional products? Uh, yes, with regard to the bio food, yes, the, this is a, a label. Uh, is is a green a green double with the with a leaf with the European starts. And, and regarding the special uh, dietary, uh, I know that some products have a label of gluten free, but I think that. With in this case, um, the professionals, the the staff of the kitchen, um, and the professional of the canteen uh, need to be aware of the situation of of the children, and and I know that in 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 this tender they try to avoid the um, uh, as much as possible the products that uh, have conflict with with allergies and this kind of things. Okay, thank you very much for your answer. So uh, we are a bit behind the schedule. So now we will move to the second part of presentations of LCA good practices on public procurement. And in this second part, we will have three presentations coming from Italy, uh, Lithuania and Slovenia. And the first presentation, which is entitled uh, Expo Focused on Sustainable Purchase, will be given by Alessandro Dacomo, Giorgio Bonvicini and Monica Lavagna. So Alessandro and his colleagues, please go yeah. ahead with the presentation. Thank you. Can you hear me? Y yes, we can hear you. Uh, very good pronunciation course of the Italian. Uh, okay, thank you. Just a moment. Okay. You should you should see the presentation. Uh, uh, okay. Let's nice see your presentation. Thank you. Good morning everybody. My name is Alessandro Dacomo and I'm a policy officer at the uh, Lombardy region. Directorate Environment and Climate, and I represent the Lombardy region uh, in the LCA for Regions project. We are going to propose to you a free voices presentation in order to be more effective and to give you uh, more precise information. And, and I will give you just a quick introduction, and then I will leave the floor to Giorgio Bonvicini. Uh, from Arena Consulting, which is our technical assistance in the project. And then I will uh, leave the floor to Monica Lavagna from the Politecnico di Milano, which is one of the stakeholders taking part in our stakeholder group. The good practice uh, we are going to present to you is the experience we learned during the, thanks to the Expo, uh, the exhibition, the Universal Exhibition 2015, and it, we could also say that the, it, this good practice is the expo legacy we have, uh, we gained during that period. Expo 2015, uh, as you probably remember, uh, was dedicated to feeding the planet and the energy for life. So the environmental issues and topics were a had a central part, were, were a central content of the, of the exhibition. Uh, the, the exhibition was a big investment and a big challenge because of course the management and the organization of the, the whole event was complex and also the and also the evaluation, the impact assessment of the of the exhibition. It was also a big trigger because several initiatives started at that time and are still uh, ongoing now very successfully. Uh, for example, the, the Milano food policy uh, quoted also by, by Sandra before, and then was a big lab for sustainability 
practices in the whole life cycle of the event. And this, uh, specifically on this uh, uh, sustainability practices that we focused our attention in the, uh, in the drawing up of the good practice. Uh, these good these uh, practices were uh, mainly in, in, on four pillars. Uh, the first one was efficient temporary buildings. The second one, green procurement criteria for the exhibition. The third one, materials used aimed at reducing waste production. And the fourth one was uh, uh, concerned uh, other initiative uh, for more sustainable events such as the certification schemes or communication. Uh, to support uh, uh, sustainable development. And so we think in all this content, there is something useful for you and also for the project and for for our region to, to, to bring into the project. And so we are now going to provide you with further details on the procurement aspects and on the LCA use in the uh, organization of the event. Uh, you can find further information at this website with all the publication of that uh, of that works, uh, those works, and now I leave the floor to Giorgio for a first focus on a, on the procurement issues. Thank you very much, Giorgio. Floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Alessandro, and nice to meet uh, you all. My name is Giorgio Bonvicini, and I am from Rina Consulting, as mentioned by Alessandro. I will briefly present you a couple of topics. One related to the temporary buildings that were realized for the Expo 2015 in Milano, and one to the green procurement uh, practices, the guidelines that were developed and been implemented. As you can see in this slide, uh, many actions were implemented regarding the temporary buildings of the Universal Exposition. They were related to the reduction of the energy demand and the energy efficiency and the use of renewables in the buildings. Here you can see the, the list of actions, the, of the main actions that were implemented. The main result regarding energy is um, that uh, uh, every building, every temporary building, every pavilion was equipped with a, a renewable energy production plant with size between 232 and 900 kilowatt. 50% of the roofing was uh, in green roofing. And uh, the presence of renewable power plants allowed covering 100% of the residual electricity demand after the energy efficiency actions. And uh, the total primary energy savings were of 90 kilo, uh, gigawatt hours and uh, 21,000 tons of carbon dioxide were saved thanks to this action. In addition, additional uh, savings were obtained regarding water consumption. Um, regarding waste production, 50% of uh, uh, material for pavilion construction, foundation included, was recycled. And uh, overall, 67% uh, of the waste generator generated at the expo were separated, uh, collected, and uh, were appropriately recycled. And then to conclude, uh, also the uh, urban heat island effect was minimized, and the local impacts on soil and air quality were minimized thanks to vegetation and to a large ecological reconstruction program in Northwest Milano. Next slide, please, Alessandro. Thank you. The other area of, uh, of action that I like to mention is uh, green procurement. Uh, green procurement guidelines for the expo were uh, realized, were developed based on existing guidelines and standards like ISO 2141 on sustainable events, uh, previ previous experiences, one the most important of which was uh, uh, London Olympic Games uh, guidelines, uh, and also literature studies and specific LCA carried out for the food industry, for materials uh, used for setups, for Furnishing, etc. The approach outlined here in the in the slide where was adopted. So for direct for partners of the expo, for sponsors uh, and for dealers, uh, the um, green procurement guidelines were mandatory. While for uh, works carried out but by countries, by uh, the, the suppliers of partners, sponsors, and dealers, they were strongly recommended. But since they were under the direct control, so they were only a, a recommendation. Next slide, Alessandra, thank you. Here, this slide lists uh, uh, the green procurement criteria that were adopted on uh, two main areas of action, one food, food and beverage and one furniture. 
and the related environmental impacts that were uh, minimized thanks to the adoption of uh, these actions uh, that are mainly related to the reduction of environmental impacts uh, related to energy consumption, to water consumption, reduction of waste, uh, the impact uh, on human health and the environment due to the use, uh, for example, regarding food of pesticides, fertilizers, etc., and also the impacts on soil, so soil erosion, forest destruction, and loss of biodiversity. And uh, uh, I leave here the list of, uh, uh, of actions and of environmental impacts mitigated for reference. Uh, and for more, uh, for additional references, there is this publication by the Italian Ministry of Environment that is available at the link that Alessandro mentioned, the Expo Will Earth, uh, the legacy of uh, Expo 2015 regarding sustainability. Next slide, please, Alessandro, which is my last one. Uh, the potential for learning on transfer, uh, why we are proposing uh, this uh, good practice. As Alessandro mentioned before, the idea is uh, to create a good practice based on the Expo 2015 experience for future worldwide mega events like, uh, again, Expo International Exhibition, Summer and Winter Olympic Games, large uh, major international sport events. We mean mega events, those having more than 1 million visitors expected but also for uh, maybe with the lighter uh, solutions and uh, guidelines for smaller events, those having between 10,000 and 1 million visitors, concert, festival, exhibition, etc. And specifically, this is interesting because the sustainability criteria could be adopted for the green procurement uh, um, and also for the tendering procedures adopted by public bodies uh, for uh, the organization of, of such events. Thank you. And I leave the floor to Monica Lavagna, Polytechnico di Milano. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a special focus uh, was uh, related to temporary buildings uh, because uh, temporary buildings uh, in mega events are the main impactful aspect. Uh, on the occasion of uh, Expo 2015, specific guidelines were developed for the LCA of temporary buildings and uh, organizational methods uh, for managing the end of life. Next uh, slide, please. Thank you. Uh, this is a methodological instrument activity was a part of an agreement uh, between Expo and uh, the Italian Environmental Ministry with uh, the goal of the assessment of the carbon footprint of the event and the identification of uh, reduction and mitigation measures with the aim of uh, preparing steering documents and the guidelines that could be also useful for other mega events uh, at the international level. Uh, in particular, these documents uh, were shared with the organizers uh, of uh, Rio 2016 Olympic Games. Next, please. Uh, Politecnico de Milano was uh, the technical supporter in this framework for the temporary structures and developed three main documents, uh, the methodological guidelines uh, for the application of the LCA in the specific case of uh, temporary buildings uh, for mega events, the guidelines for the reduction of the impacts uh, based on the application of the LCA to Expo case studies pavilions, and the management models uh, for the end of life of temporary structures. Uh, these documents are available on the website uh, of the Italian uh, Central Ministry in the link uh, below. Next, please. Uh, the uh, methodological uh, CA guidelines uh, define uh, assumptions for the first use during the event and for the second use after the event. For example, since the reference study period is longer than the service life of the temporary building, scenarios for demolition and construction of an equivalent new building shall be developed if the very use of the building for a second life is not foreseen. Next, please. Uh, the guidelines for reducing impacts were defined by evaluating some uh, end of life scenarios uh, of temporary buildings. In particular, were evaluated three scenarios temporary function with the refunctionalization of the structure for uh, a new use at the end of the event, 
temporary location that is assembly and the reassembly of the entire structure at the end of the event. And temporary life, so we the demolition at the end of the event and the waste treatment with or without a reuse recycle of the building parts. Next, please. The CA results are like that the scenario with the lowest impact is the refunctionalization on site, while uh, relocation has more impact depending on the transport distance, and demolition with the recycling of the components is the worst scenario. Moreover, also the analysis of the end of life management models highlights that the relocation is always critical if the new use is not foreseen before. Next, please. Uh, therefore, from the LCA and, of, and uh, end of life management models uh, analysis, uh, guidelines were derived on how to reduce the impacts of temporary structures in mega events to, to be shared with, uh, with other organizers. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, your presentation, dear colleagues. Uh, we will now move uh, to the next uh, presentation, uh, which will be given by Yolanta Dvarioniene uh, from the Kaunas University of Technology in Lithuania. And her talk is entitled Suggestion to Explain Blurin Public Procurement in KTU Institution. So, Yolanta, please. Okay, good. Thank you, Alvin, for the invitation. And, and now I'm trying to share my slides. Okay, can you see? Yes, we can see. Yes, and those are moving? Yes, they are moving okay. also. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So, um, uh, as Alvin presented, I'm representing Konas University of Technology, and actually uh, uh, the Institute of Environmental Engineering. And when we talked uh, with our colleagues in the project about public procurement or um, green public procurement, I really uh, thought and I discussed with the different stakeholders, uh, different stakeholders in Lithuania about the public procurement and green public procurement. And uh, while listening to our colleagues from other countries, I understood that um, and like con consultations with, the, with our stakeholders, that the procedures in our country is uh, in place or all directives are also adopted and uh, we have a very good regulation. And But I will tell you about the problems and I'm going to talk not about the KTU uh, public procurement or green public procurement of KTU because we are a public institution and those procedures are the same as any other public institution. So first of all about the uh, public procurement and green public procurement policy. How is it regulated? How is it implemented? And and who are the main actors um, in our in our country? So as as you can see from the, from the slide I'm presenting, uh, the Ministry of Environment is uh, the, the the main I would say institution, or they are sharing together with the Ministry of Economy and Innovation. Um, and uh, the Minister of Environment, they are responsible for green public procurement policy making, and uh, Ministry of Economy and Innovation forms public uh, procurement policy drafts, draft laws, and other legislation related to, to, to the public procurement. And of course, we have uh, those uh, other institutions uh, as uh, public procurement office. Uh, which implements public procurement policy and monitors compliance with the procurement law and its implementation related legislation. Of course, we have central 
Contracting authorities make centralized purchases for contracting authorities organizations and of course contracting organizations responsible for public procurement implementation of procedures in accordance with the requirements in, of the procurement law. And actually, these are the main actors uh, in our country. And uh, of course, we have started with public procurement in 1994, and nowadays uh, the main, uh, the main uh, uh, or uh, legal act or the concept of being procurement is established in several different legal acts, but those two are the main. The official concept of being procurement is established in order in order uh, of um, environmental ministry the list of products subject to environmental criteria for public procurement environmental criteria and the environmental criteria to be applied by contracting authorities when uh, procuring goods services or works approval of the description of the application procedure and of course new updated or updated uh, law on public procurement which was updated in 2017. Uh, of course, the basic principles of procurement state that the performance of procurement contracts shall comply with the obligations to protect the environment. And uh, actually, there are a lot of uh, other uh, legal acts uh, from different institutions. And uh, I put it as a question, does this lead success in green public procurement. Actually, uh, without statistics, without analysis, what we have nowadays in, in our country, which is uh, not possible to, to have the right answer or um, right uh, direction where we should go. And with this purpose, um, our there was an initiated uh, last year the project, the purpose to analyze um, GPT system in Lithuania, uh, analyze structural elements and that hamper green public procurement and enforcement. And this was made by uh, Kurt Lietuvė uh, initiative or project created for Lithuania, and they uh, they. After analysis they, uh, of uh, two years uh, green public procurement and public uh, procurement procedures in Lithuania and statistics, they, uh, they uh, concluded that um, um, uh, in 2019, 6.3 billion euro was spent on public procurement in Lithuania or 13 GDP. Public procurement is a huge economic power, and uh, the application of environmental principles in public procurement can be can become an important tool for green transformation. However, in 2019, green public procurement in Lithuania amounted only 3.3 percent from the total public procurement values, and the new national progress plan sets an ambitious target, the goal of uh, green public procurement 2030 will reach 55% uh, or rise 15 times. This is uh, like uh, our ambitions and, and of course the targets. So and um, actually um, uh, our uh, Public procurement office, they do monitoring about the public procurement and, and especially on green public of, uh, procurement, and they report to the European Commission as well. And they made for those three years 2018, 19, and 20, um, uh, they have analyzed uh, the results of public procurement and green public procurement. What we see that uh, actually the, the, there are a lot of uh, total public procurement value in, in euros was quite uh, big and, and the percentage uh, was uh, uh, increasing uh, comparing 2018 with 2020. 
However, the number of green public procurement when purchasing products with environmental criteria from the list, um, the number um, of green public procurement in percent and comparing with the number of other procurement in percent, it is very low. The same the values, uh, which show that the values are also comparing the value of green public procurement when purchasing products with environmental criteria from the list was quite low. And th this was also analyzed what kind of uh, products, uh, division of the number of uh, green public procurement products by product, which procurement is subject to environmental criteria from the list in, in percent, and we see that office equipment or writing instruments or mobile phones or paper used or writing or cleaning product was the main uh, products uh, and and uh, the, the biggest percentage of these ca categories was in the report and uh, if we uh, look at the, at the values and uh, and the values the same in, in the same categories, of course, who was the biggest um, in, in the graph. So, um, actually, uh, the target, as I said before, the target values for green public procurement, our national progress plan uh, now is forcing to uh, have 55 percent, but these values were established also for 2018, uh, uh, 17, 18, and 19 as well. Uh, was, uh, the value was for 2017, 45%, uh, and uh, for 2019 was uh, 50%. However, we still know that uh, these percents were quite, um, quite, uh, 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 not big or not big comparing with the with the with the total values and total products uh, public procurement. And actually, our project, what I mentioned before, free it for Lithuania. They wanted to analyze what are the main, how difficult to carry out uh, green public procurement, and what are the main reasons uh, to interact buying green. You see from the graph that uh, that 42% um, um, of respondents, they said that this is average, that uh, it is difficult. It is difficult in the same uh, time, difficult and not difficult to, to uh, make the green public procurement. But some other figures, uh, they also, uh, Indicated in, uh, that it is very difficult, 31%, extremely difficult, 17%, and only those 7 and 1% per indicated that was not uh, difficult to carry the green public procurement. And what uh, are the main reasons uh, for not buying green? They indicated that lack of knowledge and competencies, lack of good practices uh, in green public procurement, lack of information, price of green products, and shortage of green product products uh, in the market. Actually, when I uh, try to understand how the uh, LCA or CC is used in the green public procurement, we understood that. Uh, uh, the, the only life cycle costing, as other partners they use as well, those uh, calculators or base uh, uh, for, for specific uh, product groups, group um, developed or translated or prepared also for our market as well. However, 67% of respondents they say say that they never use life cycle costing methodology when choosing the product. 20 respondents, they indicated that life cycle costing methodology is rarely used, and 8% of respondents said they do not know what is a life cycle cost as such. So, uh, also, was the, the, the one of the, the tasks was to understand what would help to buy green in our country. 
Chris, uh, the answers from uh, those respondents that they indicated that uh, methodolog methodological assistance in the environmental protection and in the environmental protection, they uh, um, responded in 64% uh, training on how to buy green, 56% better access to information, website for green public procurement, 53%. Systems for green public procurement consultancy 50%, simplified green procurement process 48%, and consulted uh, constantly updated green public procurement environmental protection criteria 28%. So, uh, actually, this is what, what I wanted to share with you and uh, our. our um, uh, public procurement office, they do, uh, they try to understand why the green public procurement is struggling in Lithuania, why um, our uh, institutions, public institutions, they uh, don't use the life cycle assessment or green public procurement as such. And uh, actually, there is a lot of um, uh, conclusions uh, or um, made by uh, by those um, uh, by this project uh, what was uh, initiated last year and finished this spring only the spring uh, that uh, gives quite good answers what could be our next steps and uh, uh, some of uh, answers or uh, conclusions was made uh, related with our project with LCA for region because it was indicated that they are lacking uh, good practices on uh, uh, on uh, green public procurement and uh, LCA or CC. They lack uh, some good examples, and I hope that uh, our project will help uh, uh, our country to go further uh, in the green public procurement in our country. Thank you very much. And if you have some questions, I can them now or later when we have the. Okay, thank you very much, Yolanta, for your presentation. Uh, we will now move to the final talk, which was, which it comes from Slovenia. This uh, this contribution was prepared by my colleague Gregor Jereau and myself, and I will be talking on green public procurement and LCC in practice, and the emphasis will be given to green vehicles. So this is the example of the good practice actually that comes for, uh, from about 10 years ago when in Slovenia national action plan on green public procurement was put into the action in the period of 2009-2012. And at the time the target was set that, all, that about 50% of all procurement um, by central government authorities in eight product products should include green public uh, procure, uh, green carbon procurement criteria and that this target should be made by the year of 2012. So to reach uh, or to implement this strategy, uh, several actions were taken like training on green public procurement pilot projects and assisted in uh, the public authorities were assisted in attaining third party certified environmental management system. Also, for this purpose, the public procurement agency was established in 2010 and went into operation in 2011. To my knowledge, this public procurement agency was existing for two years and then it was retransformed into the public procurement directorate, which still exists nowadays. And yesterday you, you were able to hear the presentation of the director general of this public procurement directorate. So anyway, the agency was responsible for carrying out the strategy uh, and joint procurements for Slovenian public authorities for a number of products and service groups. At the time, uh, uh, eight, these were eight uh, service groups that were uh, somehow assisted or uh, considered at, that, uh, at the beginning of, of all these activities. Uh, the agency was also implementing uh, green public procurement in its procurement of electricity, paper, office, IT equipment and vehicles. 
and this built upon the work done by the Ministry of Public Administration to introduce green public procurement as part of central purchasing in Slovenia. So the agency <clears throat> in the purchased on behalf of about uh, 130 uh, procurers uh, in the public uh, in the public sector. So, and what I'm going to present here today is a good practice uh, from this kind of activities. And there is a doc, also this uh, good practice document was uh, published in 2012. And it is also uh, briefly mentioned in the third edition of a handbook on green public procurement uh, published by the European Commission. And in this document, uh, uh, a scan of uh, part of uh, each is uh, part of it is shown here on the left hand side of the screen. Uh, there were two subject matters considered. One of it was uh, green electricity and the other one was, were green uh, vehicles. Regarding the green uh, electricity, uh, there were there was green public procurement considered, uh, and, but no LCC. Uh, methodology was implemented, so I will focus only on green vehicles where also the LCC uh, was included. Uh, <clears throat> as I said, in this particular practice, the subject matter was uh, road vehicles, and at uh, that time, all vehicles must meet the Euro 5 emission standard or equivalent, and the maximum CO2 emission range was from 150 to 180 gram per kilometer for different kinds of, uh, of cars and vehicles in general. Uh, there were, besides the operational life costs, uh, the awarding criteria were also uh, considering the service network, the safety and environmental equipment, gear shift indicator, warranty period, delivery time, and tire pressure monitor. So uh, here is the equation given, uh, which was also shown yesterday by two presenters. And it is how, in this case, the operational lifetime costs were calculated. As you can see here, uh, regarding the emissions, CO2 is considered as a greenhouse gas and also the NO2 uh, gases are considered that could also that are also have a greenhouse effects and this uh, the influence of NOx is much higher compared to CO2 that's why also the prices here of NO2 are much uh, in gram per kilometer are much higher compared to the prices coming uh, from CO2. And also, which is also considered here in this equation is the particular matter. All these values here, which are shown in the equation, are uh, coming uh, from the clean vehicle directive, which was considered in uh, calculating the operational life cycle costs. Uh, as mentioned here, then further, uh, in 10 years ago, the road transport vehicles were responsible in the EU for about 26% of final energy consumption and about 24% of CO2 emission. So urban areas consequently were suffering uh, uh, from local air and noise pollution. And as in, in turn, it was obvious that further development and deployment of new and better environmental technology was needed in many aspects, including public vehicles, as part of finding solutions for these issues. Um, the Clean Vehicles Directive uh, also provided a common methodology for taking greenhouse gases emission and energy consumption into account by making these calculations. When uh, these activities were made and uh, during this uh, procurement procedure, it was possible uh, to achieve that the decrease in emission uh, uh, while purchasing this, they say, 
green cars varied, uh, varied from 3 gram per kilometer to 45 gram per kilometer per vehicle. So it means that a sufficient, uh, sufficient decrease in emissions was achieved by considering LCC, uh, a LCC approach. Uh, regarding the practice that I am describing here, uh, the most economically advantageous standard achieved the following score. So more than 80% was going to the operational lifetime costs. And then, as you can see here, there were also uh, points were also given to, to other award criteria, which were including in this, uh, in this public uh, tender. So, uh, to, uh, and then I will here explain you what was also going on further in this, uh, in this uh, field. So, as it was also part, uh, it was also mentioned yesterday, then in the year 2011, uh, the Slovenian government uh, actually adopted a decree on green public procurement. Uh, which uh, stipulated 11 groups of products and service groups that the public buyers had to consider um, had to consider in uh, in the green public procurement, and then the relevant area of green public procurement uh, has further undergone uh, additional development, and nowadays uh, in this in the decree. On green public procurement, there are 20 public procurement subjects for which environmental considerations are mandatory. And also, through the years, I could also report on other examples uh, of, uh, of public procurements in which the LCC uh, is considered, but here is only one very, uh, I could say, very fresh. Uh, example in which that includes life cycle methodology that is life cycle costing and this is a screenshot of the portal of public procurement in Slovenia showing that there was a tender issued for the purchase of uh, vehicles um, and this uh, and the tender was issued by the Ministry of Public Administration regard, as I said, regarding the purchase of, uh, of a, a variety of vehicles. And also in this case, the LCC was considered. So this is all from my side and uh, I will be glad to answer to your, uh, to your question. So thank you very much. So now, uh, uh, Alvin, so now, you, uh, you are sharing the screen. Yes, just a moment. So now, the, so now the all these three presentations are open for uh, are open for uh, questions and answers. Are there any are there any questions from the from the uh, from the participants? I mean, hi, yes. Alessandro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I see there are two questions for Lombardy concerning our, our presentation. Yes. So the, there was the one. Yeah. Yes, go, please go yeah. ahead. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. One, one was uh, about the availability to share information concerning the, the expo exhibition. Of course, we, we are available. Uh, you can, you can uh, take me as reference and write to my address. You find it on the, on the, um, on the presentation at the, in the first uh, slide, uh, and of course uh, the website. 
uh, can provide you with a lot of uh, documents. Uh, the, the, the text is in Italian, but then you find the, uh, the PDF also in English. <clears throat> and then there is a question concerning the, a nice question concerning the music, uh, the Eurovision. Uh, honestly, I'm not up to date with respect to this event. Uh, now I know that we have to host uh, this, uh, this event next year in Milan. Um, I cannot answer you correctly, but uh, for sure some good practice will be applied. But consider that Expo 2015 was really a huge event because it was one square kilometers, uh, the area, and we received millions of visitors. So it was really, I think Eurovision will not be at the same level, but uh, um, we have also produced here in, in our region an internal guideline for events, for the organization of events, perhaps, perhaps even smaller. And so we, we I, I hope and I think also with the Milan municipality, we are going to use that uh, guidelines and that, that experience. Uh, I'm not sure I address you. I'm addressing your 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 interest and your uh, your question. Okay. Thank you very much, Alessandra, for uh, for your uh, replies to the questions. And there is also a question uh, for Yolanta. Yes, uh, yes I'll, I'll see. I can read and try yes. to answer. Yes, thank okay. you, Adam. You are so active with the questions, and actually, it is very nice to discuss. And what you wrote that uh, very important. Oh, okay, in this presentation, thank you uh, very much. But what do you think about the consolidating and centralizing green procurement processes? So, to answer to this question, it's uh, very for me, it's very easy because in this questionnaire on the survey uh, was the question and, and they made the, the, the conclusion and that, that actually we are lacking centralized or institutions which uh, coordinates uh, green public procurement. And one of the conclusion was from this report. So I think it's, uh, yes, it would be nice to have such Consolidated or or uncentralized green procurement process. Is it more mm -hmm. profitable for the institution or for the community and also for the environment? I think uh, this is for all stakeholders uh, and of course, first of all, for the environment. People are also part of the environment and of course, institutions and for for communities. And actually, in our country, our our. Um, um, citizens or our community smaller or bigger, they are becoming more and more greener and they are demanding more and more greener products. And I think it is uh, it is that just um, we maybe, I suppose, and we will discuss with our stakeholders from national authorities and uh, they about their maybe problems and uh, what what the, the main reason because people they are active. Citizens or regions, they are active in 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 being greener, but something is struggling with the demand and supply. And this was like, say, the private companies they indicated that there is no demand, and public institutions they say that no supply. It's not true because something is maybe. I, I would say that we have very good uh, background and basis and legislation in the country, but still the process is uh, struggling <laughs> with the green public procurement. Okay, thank you very much. And there are, uh, as I could see also in the chat area, there are two questions for me. But the first one is from Adam regarding uh, the use of hydrogen as a fuel for cars and large cars. As I could say at the moment in the public transportation in Slovenia, in certain cases, we are using methane as a, uh, as a fuel for local buses. At least it is so in Ljubljana. I don't know what the percentage of uh, 
these buses, but there are quite many that are used on daily basis in the public transportation. Regarding hydrogen, we have two hydrogen fuel stations in Slovenia that have already been introduced, but I am afraid there are still no hydrogen driven cars around, or, uh, or at least there might be just a few. And there is another question from Tomas. Uh, the question goes the in the following way. Are environmental criteria in Slovenia for vehicles obligatory for contracting authorities? I think that when the, uh, when the public authorities uh, issue tenders, I think that there, as it was explained yesterday, there is a certain percentage of cars that must meet uh, this criteria. So I think if you want to participate in these tenders, then you have to uh, consider and fulfill this, uh, the, this criteria. So in a certain case, in a certain way, this means that it is that it is obliga obliga obligatory to uh, to uh, if you want to uh, if you want to participate in tenders and to win a bid. Yeah. So now there is there uh, in for regarding the second part of presentations. I in this uh, live discussion board there was no question. So I think we can move now to the to the to the presentation uh, which will be given uh, uh, which will be given by Mrs. Milena Basta Tertnik. And the title of her presentation will is challenges of public procurement in practice. So before giving her the floor, I will briefly introduce Ms. Basta Tertnik. Uh, Milena Basta Tertnik is a lawyer and expert in the field of public procurement, concessions, public private partnerships, business operations of public law entities and project management. As a former long term consultant at the National Audit Commission and with several years of work within the consulting company, she has a lot of experience and knowledge in the mentioned fields. So, Ms. Basta Tertnik, please go ahead with your presentation. Thank you. Uh, we are not able to hear you. Do you hear me now? Yes, now I okay. can hear you. Well. I'm so sorry. I just, I was too, um, too quick. Okay, hello again. Thank you for the introduction. I will talk about the challenges of the public procurement in practice. I will concentrate in the one part on the green public procurement, and I will look a little bit from the point of view from the legal organization. I believe that you have already heard, uh, heard of, uh, how the system and the green public procurement system in Slovenia works. Um, we will talk about it um, in the further. So, but first to have a feeling what is Slovenia like, I prepared some few bases, few um, few facts about, just a moment, why does it work now here? Okay, hmm. sorry, something. Okay, just a moment, I will. Do you, uh -huh. okay, great, now I'll get it to the gallery. Okay, few bases of public procurement system in Slovenia. Uh, we have implemented two directives in a one public procurement act is called PPA3 um, before in 2016. Before that, we have two separated um, acts. One was from the public sector and one was for infrastructure sector. So I think that now it's much better to put it all in a one, um, one act, one law, um, because it's much more use, um, easier to use um, one act, and especially in, in the um, institutes where there are very similar uh, regulation on, from the bo for both fields of um, public sector and infrastructure sector. Uh, I believe that we are a little bit specific about the regulations. Uh, we have six regulations um, decrees on the public procurement field. 
uh, one was one is green public procurement. Then there is also financial instruments and common contracting authorities. So um, specific in Slovenia is that uh, we like to formalize everything, um, a lot of things, and therefore we have so many regulations um, in the public procurement field. Um, we are we have only two million citizens but we have over 3,000 contract contracting authorities. Um, that means that each school, kindergarten, museum is a contracted authority, has a status of contracted authority, and therefore is obligated for itself to, um, to manage a public procurement procedure, which sometimes can be um, a little bit challenged. Around 11.5% of GDP um, it's a value of public procurement, um, that is 5.5 5 billion euro. So that's an interesting amount, amount of money. Um, so especially now when the crisis, were, last year crisis um, regarding COVID situations in Slovenia, we do have um, some specific orders. And I believe that um, supervision organs will look about and check it, uh, was it all um, by the by the law by the rules, uh, we have around seven thousand public procurement procedures per year, and that's also big amount because we have um, pretty low estimated values for using the public procurement act, and that is twenty thousand euros for goods and services, forty thousand euros for for construction. Um, now it is. Um, it is a proposal of a change of the Public Procurement Act, which will a little bit um, higher the values on 30,000 euros per good and um, services. This is a little bit specific. Um, I believe that it, that is common for more Eastern Europe, um, that the countries do um, regulate the public procurement procedure um, um, in the pretty, in the much lower, lowest way that it is, um, that that it that it is the value that the, the directive must be um, implemented and used. So therefore, Slovenia has twenty thousand, and if you know that to to to, to two hundred thousand is the estimate is the estimated value is the um, tre treasure holds to use a directive. We are much lower there then, and um, that that's probably the reason why seven thousand public procedures per year um, is a number that is in Slovenia um, regular. Um, I will talk a little about about supervision. Um, just the slides. Um, so the primary primary um, independent um, organ body um, that, re that that um, that can review public procurement procedure is National Review Commission. Um, two years ago, one and a half until one and a half years ago, uh, we were the only country in European Union that did not provide a claim or some kind of fact um, um, against the decisions of public procurement procedure. So in 2019, um, the change of Public Procurement Act um, was delivered. So that now there is a possibility to file an administrative claim to the administrative court, but there is not really much effective because it is not suspendable. So if it's not suspendable, it cannot. Uh, it, it doesn't mean that it can. Um, um, that, 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 that it can immediately prevent uh, breaches or Ill, 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 illegality of the decisions of the um, reviewing body. Um, we have also a court of audit. Um, some ex-president told that this is a toothless tiger. Uh, why toothless tiger? Because they um, they they control an economic, efficient, effective use of public funds, but they also do not have um, some kind of instrument to immediately prevent the breaches the, um, or the inefficient, ineffective use of public funds. So there are all um, funds. There are also the, um, only an opinion. So um, it is not really uh, some kind of 
instrument that is really um, effective in a moment. Anti-corruption commission um, has jurisdiction to inspect suspicion of alleged corrupt conduct and other irregularities, but also the court of audit does not have some um, instrument that can immediately um, prevent these breaches. So um, it also there are also uh, opinions of the anti-corruption commission, and it's more like a hygiene instrument um, organ than something that is really effective in a real life. Um, I, um, I have to prepare something about uh, digitalization in public procurement, I was asked, asked. So I believe that you already spoken about it, how it is in Slovenia. I have listened before um, today a little of the uh, some of the presentations and um, Slovenia is pretty um, innovative in the digitalization of the public procurement procedures per se, we'll say, but um, we have a lack of digitalization regarding the green procurement. So um, I will talk about it later. First, let's see how it is um, where to um, publish the public procurement. Uh, we have an uh, electronic system um, for publishing public procurement procedure. It's called the Portal of Public Procurement. Um, it, it, there is a website, so links you can see it on the website if you want to. Um, and everything that is um, regarding the um, public procurement, all communications, all changes, all explanations must, must go during that portal. Um, and exclusively during the portal, so that transpa transparency, um, for, which, which is meant that everybody can see what is happening in specific tender documentation or documentation regarding public procurement is seen to everybody and known to everybody. That is very positive, I believe. So this is how it looks. Chemistry Institute has yesterday. Um, publish one public procurement um, subject. Um, since last year, um, this is also a uh, uh, demand of the directive. Um, there is um, so the submitting of the tenders must be exclusively during in electronic form during during the electronic system, um, and it is called um, EN. Um, it, that, that was prepared by the government and it is free of charge to use for the tenderers. There are also some private portals in Slovenia uh, which are not free of charge and not really much in use. Um, that um, electronic, um, electronic submit, uh, submitting uh, tender in electronic way can cause some problems to the foreign tenderers because uh, first they have to register by the digital certificate to the system, to the portal, and that takes a lot of time and en uh, some time or some energy. Um, so um, this is one the specific that the foreign tenders should know before they try to um, submit a tender in a Slovenian public procurement procedure. This is how it looks. Then on the green um, spot, um, the tender can submit a uh, the tender can submit a tender in an electronic way. Um, I believe that a lot of countries are very um, interesting uh, interested in our um, portal that um, that shows that shows the amount of money that shows the transparency of spending of public money. Um, during the ERAR, it's called ERAR um, system, and then you can see almost all transactions of the public body in from 2003. So um, you can see here is the Institute of Chemistry, and you can see um, the time to, to whom it was um, paid, how much, and the reason why. So I believe that this is very important also to have um, to have a view of the, a view. I mean, spending money to whom it goes, and sometimes when um, when, jur when journalists uh, made some analysis, made some analysis, analysis, they see um, we can see 
how the po politic and some companies always goes hand in hand. And here on, on, on Erari, you can see a company which is close to the, the, the politics that, that is there on time. It goes by, by the government and then falls down. So from this is also um, good to know because it is because when it's much more transparent, um, it is a little hard to play um, games that are not allowed. Okay, now um, I will have some words about green public procurement in Slovenia. Um, in 2017, we have adopted the green public procurement regulation. I believe that Tasha Matas told you yesterday about it. Um, and um, what is specific is that it is mandatory, in, use of it is mandatory in Slovenia. Um, it is obligated to use for 20 subjects of public procurement, such as food, constructions, cleaners, electronic devices, clothes, energy, toilets, flashes, and so, and so. Um, because of the um, statistic and um, also because of the transparency, and every name um, of that of the subject that um, green public procurement regulatory is obligated has to um, has to include the word green or environmental friendly so that you can see on the first side that it is going for the subject that the green public procurement regulatory uh, was included. Okay, um, there are a lot of goals in, in public procurement regulatory 29 goals and I will just show you some for example, um, let's say 50% of food must be organic. 20% of food must be from quality schemes. 50% of electricity must be from re renewable sources. 100% of computers must be most energy efficient. 20% of elect electric lamps must be classified in the highest energy class available on the market. The same it, it goes for the tires uh, for the vehicles. So. There are goals uh, stated in a regulatory which, which contracting authority should meet and should demand. Um, and sometimes um, we have um, a little challenges how to do it. But first, let me show you how the Slovenia um, has um, solved just in a, in a, in a one way. Um, Public, how to buy um, food for the schools and um, for the schools and kindergartens and hospitals. Um, in in the, in also in, in in it was even in 2017 when the directive um, was different than today and did not allow the exceptions that we made in 2017. In the, in the, in the, that was all, all um, that it was. Um, in the consequence of the public procurement green regulatory. Um, first, of, first of all, so if we have a goal, um, we, ha we, we have to realize it in one way. So one way is how technical specifications, one way is a reason for exclusion, so um, as a condition, um, then uh, as a criterion of the award of the public procurement and as a special provision in the contract. So there are many ways how to um, how to fulfill the requirements, how to fulfill the the goals. Um, so one of the specific that I was talking just before that slide uh, is that in 2017, uh, seven, um, in 2017 and now also in the new PPA3. Uh, we have an exclusion. Um, this exclusion is allowed it, um, in the directive from 2014, but this was not allowed um, in the 2017 by the directive from the from the year 2008, uh, when we first um, stated that demand or that possibility in a public procurement three and two. So, contracting, contracting authority may exclude one or more lots from the public procurement procedure if. The excluded lots together represent a maximum of 20% of all lots, and the value of each individual excluded lot is less than 80,000 euro. 
I believe that that is on a first sight a little bit difficult to understand. Let me give you one example. This was specifically um, made um, the reason for this was it was um, was in a demand in the Green Public Procurement Regulatory and um, that, that demanded 10% um, in the first time. Now it's 15% of ecological food, ecological food. So um, in, in a moment, all the contracting authorities came to the question, how can we buy, um, how can we buy uh, um, ecological food? Um, so this exclusion is very uh, helpful to the contracting authority that buys uh, or needs supplier for the food. So. If you see an example, we have three, three, 300,000 euros um, is a value of all public procurement of all lots. What is lot? Lot is a, um, is a finished part of the subject of the public procurement, which can be submitted independently. So the lot is a, um, it's a, it's, it's a, uh, if, the, if the subject of public procurement is divided to lot, it means in a in the practice that there are a little smaller subjects of, of, of public documents which can be um, which can be um, submitted and uh, delivered separately and independent regarding all the, the subjects. So if we have a subject divided into six lots, let's say one lot is 100 euros, let's say meat, okay? Two lots value 7,500 um, um, euros each, um, let's say um, this is um, common food, like kind of flour and salt and everything. And the other lot is, um, I don't know, chicken meat if you want to. And then we have two lots value 25,000 each. And that two lots, the second, the last one, each lot is worth less than 80,000 euros. Together, they worth 50,000 euros, which is less than 20% of all the value of the subject of the public procurement. So that means that first three lots must be published in a portal, uh, um, public procurement portal, but last two lots can be ordered directly without compliance of any of the public procurement rule. So um, this is a possibility for a uh, contracting authority um, to buy um, local food, local ecologic food, uh, we said that in the short cha chains, for the short chains, so uh, that we can, um, uh, so it is, it's a chance to, to, to buy from the locals, from the ecological, and for also small, small amounts you can buy, so you don't have to give a contract to the one, you can buy it from the local farmers. For, for a few kilos, and so so this is um, this is pretty common institute um, in the public procurement for uh, supply of food um, and, uh, for, uh, for 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 fulfilling the green uh, green regulatory. Um, you will see my how I think uh, on the end of my contribution. But uh, sometimes in the practice, uh, authorities cannot meet the green requirements. Let's say if I, if I have just talked about food, uh, we have 15% of the food must be ecologic and 20% must come from the um, scheme, scheme of qualities. But sometimes uh, the requirements of the contracting authority are big. Let's say big school, my sons go, go to the school where there are thousand pupils. So there are, there are pretty big needs um, for the food, a big amount. And if you want to put in the short chain, as I talked before about that um, excluded lots, um, there, there, are not, uh, there are not so many farmers um, that um, that that can supply um, the school um, continuously um, and for sure. So sometimes um, this, uh, how would say, um, it doesn't come to the to to to, um, to the center to the beat of the this um, green procurement. 
is because it is much easier for a contracting authority put, to put this on a the publish that lots ecological I don't know, fruit and vegetable on a public procurement on the portal ENA and the big suppliers which buys food uh, which buy which big suppliers which buy food in Italy or Spain or other country for the borsas for the big markets then they can they supply this food so but then if you ask yourself did it really come to, to the meaning of it we have food from it, that it comes from Spain um, so we have to use uh, you have to then think about I don't know the transport the people that are included um, the fact that food that comes to the tables of our schoolers I know it's five, four, six, ten days old. So sometimes I ask myself, um, is it is this a real way or not? Um, then the other that that was that was um, an example that happened to me when um, I was consulting on contracting authority. Um, we have a demand in a, or goal demand, whatever you want to say. The, the it is the same. I mean the principle. Um, that the proportion of the road vehicles uh, with at least 10% lower emissions set as a maximum permitted by the later Euro standard shall be at least 65%. Now I have a situation. I had a situation when the control authority was a center for social work, and they needed a vehicle, um, small four vehicles, small um, four VD. Um, that nurse can use when they're visiting older people in the local hilly villages. The amount of money that they can spend on one vehicle was a nine, a nine, uh, 11,000 euros. So the green refining actually in practice means that three or four vehicles must be hybrid vehicle, hybrid. So hybrid car is around 30% more expensive than the regular one. Um, therefore, only three cars instead of four they can afford, they can buy. And on the market, they are not so small and strong in apostrophic for VD, VD hybrid cars that nurses actually need for driving on tight, tight narrow streets. There are some four VDs, but these, they, these are much bigger. They spend much, much more, much more fuel, and it, they're not so economic and some, some have handful for use. So this is why I put downstairs. We have to consider: is this the right way um, that we we put a demand and said you have to do it, no matter and no no regarding regarding your um, situation, or should we put another way to um, to support um, and to um, make a contracting authority? Um, to feel that it's good for them and that it's needed um, to go to the green procurement procedure. In, in that case specifically, we have not ordered the cars um, hybrid because it, it, it is, was just not economic, it was just not effective, and actually they did not use that kind of car. So, a little bit to consider. Then, Another challenge that I see in practice is um, that con contracting authority does, do not always possess a knowledge for estimation of suitability of proof certificate. If you say, here's the one, one case, one demand that is regarding the cotton and in, in um, to go to the goals to the, um, to the green procurement regulation, there are, um, that is, it is not allowed that the cotton um, has some of the contains some some of that. I cannot even exactly read it right because I'm a jurist and um, probably you understand you all understand because you came from the chemistry field. But you can see there are a lot of demands. Um, what kind of cotton or the, what should cotton not contain? So. Um, sometimes um, the contracting authority um, do not have a knowledge and that, um, to see, to find out is the certificate that it was submitted in a tender is the right one. Does it show that it does not um, include, I don't know, heptachlor? 
and 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 then it comes only to some paper okay he's got the paper it's some kind it feels it looks very i don't know specific very chemistry whatever and it, and it takes that um tender as valid tender so again in the practice do we know and that that and that um that is when i said in the beginning that our country do not, does not provide enough tools to help um, to help contract authorities and also on the other side to the tenderer what that demands really need um, really means in a practice um, so that it would be easier for us to use it in a practice. Um, so if, if we're going back to that um, what should not what what mustn't contain contains uh, cotton is let's say method of proof is certificate. And then our certificate for from an independent um, accredited institution, appropriate evidence that the requirements are met, and so um, so different. Um, there are many different way, ways to um, um, to show how the, the the tender finds the green requirements, but still, is contracting authority able to to qualify it? So this is also a problem, I think. Um, then, if you say green demand for cleaners or for, for food, um, okay, we have a phase when we go to the public procurement procedure, then the tender submit a, ten, uh, submit a tender, then the contracting authority looks to the certificate, looks at the price, look at the price, and um, awards the public procurement. And then it comes to the to the field of the execution of the contract. So how to prevent, or how to um, how to how to control that in the in the time of the execution of the contract, the goods that are offered are really used in practice. This is also one. You know, we say um, paper can um, paper can stand everything. But not really in the practice. So this is this is also one challenge. How do, um, if if we have demand, if we have regulatory, we have to get it in a real life and control it and fulfill it and um, do it in a real life. Um, so that 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 that, that, that it means that it really means some, meant something. Um, so just for thinking, for my conclusion, um, Slovenia has today on valid 886 acts and almost 21,000 regulatories. Um, again, we are a small country, two million citizens. Um, so, um, and also we are the only member that has green procurement regulated by regulatory provision. Um, so, um, I put here gold plate. You know what gold plating means? Gold plating is actually an excess of norms, guidelines, and procedures accumul ac accumulated by national levels, which interfere with the, the expected policy goals to be achieved in a such a regulation. So, um, just for consider, if you are thinking how to get green public procurement in your country. Think a lot of options, take the best, a lot of options, take the best one and ask yourself, is regulatory right and the only way to fulfill environmental needs and requirements? It can be similar effect reachable using soft law, you know, as a, as a recommendations. It can be similar effect reachable by financial, financial incentive in the case of environmental friendly procurement, public procurement. Probably yes. So this is for my conclusion. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Basta Kurtnik, for your interesting and very uh, detailed uh, presentation, uh, which is now open for questions and comments from the project partners and uh, participants. So we have here in the chat area. We have a, a comment and question for, from uh, our colleague Adam from Poland. And this comment goes and question goes as follows. 
Thank you for presenting the public procurement system. I am impressed by the transparency of spending available to anyone online at any time. Is every institution included in this system or just those that manage the larger sums of public money? Thank you for a question. Yeah, every institution is in that system. Um, this is automatic system when go, when they pay the uh, the transaction is seen on that um, digital portal. Um, the only um, the only thing that is not included are um, how I say um, contract individual contract uh, authors or author contract or other contracts um, or, or or other um, pays are seen for everybody um, actually in the moment that they, they were paid. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there, uh, are there further questions? If not, then I would like to thank you once again for your uh, for your presentation and for your willingness uh, to participate in the trans learning journey organized within the LSA for Regions contract uh, project. So uh, I believe that uh, all information you have shared with us will uh, help us also to uh, regarding the further activities of the project. So thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation and goodbye to everyone. Thank you. Bye. So, based on the program, uh, we are now uh, uh, here at the end of almost at the end of the today's program. So we have here the, on the schedule the wrap up session, and uh, again. Uh, the this will this activity or this will be done by Francesco. So please go ahead, Francesco. Thanks, Albin. And considering that we uh, accumulated some delay on the agenda, what I would propose, I'm sharing my screen so you can have a look. Uh, what I would propose is to uh, start tomorrow morning uh, looking briefly at uh, uh, the, the live discussion boards and the comments. And uh, for the moment, uh, uh, Fritz, I don't know if you are online uh, and listening. We were having some uh, uh, exchange of uh, comments, of overall comments on the GPPs presented, and uh, Fritz was raising some relevant inputs. I don't know if he wants to elaborate further on them. I tried to summarize them in the white post its you. Uh, uh, you find in the uh, live discussion board. Well, uh, thank you, Francesco. Uh, it's really up to Alban to see if he wants to extend the session by some minutes mm -hmm. or put it off to tomorrow. Yes, we can ex we can extend the session for a few minutes. It's not a problem at all. So please go ahead, Fritz. Okay. Uh, thank you, Alban, and uh, welcome to everybody else. Uh, I've been listening in, uh, fascinated by the interesting experiences and examples that have come forward. And uh, I think it's been a really good session. Many interesting examples and a very wide spread in good practices, which is also very welcome because it shows how broad a subject green public procurement really is. There's also a ana useful analysis of the challenges uh, particularly uh, uh, Yolanta's presentation struck me. It really comes to the core of while the theory is easy, the practice is often more complicated. And I think everyone is facing that. But overall, uh, what was interesting to me to look at some trends without mentioning individual uh, GPs, uh, we can still say that some of the GPs, the good practices have been multi-criteria incorporating several of the sustainable development goals, we're still seeing some uh, good practices that focus on only a single criterion. Now, this is not to say you should not do it, single criterion, but with, I think it, to be honorable, it should be mentioned that what the side effects might be on other SDGs, on other criteria. Uh, so 
this is something that we need to keep in mind that single issue, single issue activities uh, not necessarily uh, capturing the entire spread of concerns that we face. Uh, I can, what I'm referring to is particularly, it's very common now to focus on carbon footprints, whether it's in buildings or for food or for vehicles, for anything else, without actually understanding what the side effects of these efforts are on other sustainability criteria like biodiversity, social impact and so forth. Okay, we'll cover this at another time. There's been some, some mention of the use of LCA and also life cycle costing, but there've also been a number of good practices that are more focused on general broad life cycle thinking without any particular methodology, just assuming that uh, if we're talking, if we're thinking life cycle, it will happen. Uh, it would be nice to think that that would be so, but I'm not sure that that's true. And I would suggest that uh, we should resort to the maximum that we can to standardized metrics for life cycle thinking uh, and life cycle analysis. What is interesting, but not surprising, that the reference to life cycle costing, I think it's good to see that tool, including in legislation, but I have not seen any examples of life cycle costing that looks at external environmental criteria. All of the LCC examples that we've seen are for the product owner, i.e. the cost to the owner of the product. It is not dealing with the cost to the commu wider community. And we know this is a limitation. LCC is intrinsically complicated, but I'm rather disappointed that none of the LCC exercises have taken the broader environmental cost to the community into account. So this is something I think as we go forward in this exercise, we should take to heart and see what we can do on this particular issue. Uh, it's noticeable that in many cases of the good practices uh, apply to a list of products, a standardized list of products, and not to products generally. Now, I know this makes the ex administrative exercise easier. Nevertheless, there are some limitations uh, in the sust broader sustainability agenda by excluding products from the consideration. So this is something that it's for national regional policy to take on board, but to focus on green procurement only for a given list of products is obviously limiting the significance of the exercise. Uh, one other thing is that I was a little surprised that there's relatively little reference of how useful echo labels and EPD and PEFs can be. Now, these are instruments that were devised to highlight the environmental qualities and environmental performance of products. And I must say, I'm rather surprised that they're not much used in the references that you've all made on greener public purchasing. So there may be a reason for that, but this is something that we could perhaps discuss in the uh, in the forum and in the dialogue tomorrow as to why there seems to be so little reference to echo labels as an assistance to green purchasing officers. Maybe it's happening and it's just not being mentioned. I would like to think so. This is it. Uh, there will be more comments coming tomorrow without a doubt, but it's a first appreciation of the what I thought were fascinating and very interesting good practices that we've seen today. Congratulations to the partners for the compilation has been very useful. Thank you. And thanks a lot, Fritz. Uh, I think we will uh, try by today to uh, export some PDF uh, highlighting at, le at least with arrows interconnections between comments like we did for the yesterday's board and to share them with you. Uh, by the beginning, before uh, starting the uh, the three breakout rooms tomorrow for the uh, peer review session, the, the bilateral uh, breakout rooms, so uh, maybe they can feed discussions of tomorrow uh, TLJ. And yes, tomorrow morning, Albin, if you want, you can start as today with a super short uh, uh, readout of the today uh, uh, live discussion board. 
Okay, thank you, Francesca, and thank you, Fritz, very much uh, for your inputs in this wrap up session. So, um, yes, I agree with what you have proposed. So, tomorrow morning, we will start with the with the summary of uh, of 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 this uh, the second day of the TLJ four. So I think this will be very this will be very beneficial. Yeah. So so now we are indeed at the end of the today's uh, of the today's uh, program. Uh, uh, so uh, before closing, I would like to share with you a few information about the program tomorrow so we will have we will start tomorrow with two presentations first we will get uh, first we will hear some more in detail about the Kano academy and Kano platform uh, this will be the uh, contribution from finland then the second contribution will be by fritz who will be talking about lca in europe and green public procurement and then in the second part of the today's of the tomorrow's uh, program uh, uh, we will uh, then uh, spend time with the slovenian policy context and then the and then the peer review session so uh, we will start the program uh, uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, and you will all receive uh, the, the link for the WebEx platform as well as uh, links for the live uh, discussion boards in the early today in the early afternoon. So to close the, today's program, I would like to thank all the presenters of good practices it was indeed a very interesting session i also thank uh, uh miss uh, basta turning to give uh, to give her talk i also thank the uh, i also thank francesco and fritz for the valuable comments and i thank you all for your uh fruitful cooperate uh, attendance and cooperation in the event so I wish you all uh, a pleasant after uh, pleasant afternoon, and we, I hope to see you all again tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. So enjoy the the afternoon and have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank bye. you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. <laughs>